Hi everyone, it's Pete here from CCW. Um, it's good to catch up with you again, even though it is via video. Um, this morning I was reading in uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 15, these words. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. You know, in me, this stirs a great sense to praise God. And it heightens my devotion to him. Um, and it brings me back to the fact that Jesus is this gift. And in the true spirit of a gift, it's free. It doesn't cost me anything. And because of that, I have a great sense of freedom and comfort. And it gives me a deep sense of being released from all the burdens that I have. And I trust that um, you feel that way too in your relationship with Jesus. I'd encourage you actually to read this passage, uh, 2 Corinthians 9. It's, it's a great passage. The backdrop is God's generosity and actually what happens when we are generous as well. Um, and what happens when we are is that other people, other people experience God and they want to praise God. And this is a season which would be really good for us to be generous to those around us. We wanted to share with you a couple of stories from the family, just to give you some encouragement. Um, the things that uh, people have actually already given themselves to do for us as a family. And one of those is prayer. As many of you would know, uh, Josh Ronalds has been overseas uh, for some months now. And uh, it became apparent that he really needed to get home. And this was becoming very difficult as other people have experienced too, who have tried to get back home. Um, and so as a family, we were called and rallied to pray. And the wonderful news is that Josh arrived home yesterday. And we just want you to know as a family that Pete, uh, Wendy, Sarah and Josh are just so grateful that they had people who could pray for them. And it was quite miraculous that he was able to get home. And Hopefully in the future, we'll get to hear the whole story of what actually happened for Josh. But we want to thank you for praying and can, we can encourage you to continue to pray. You know, last night I heard this expression on the TV, here in Australia we have not faced the storm yet. For most of us, the impact that we've experienced has really been about our livelihood. But as time progresses, uh, we'll begin to hear stories of people who have actually been affected or have actually contract, uh, contracted the virus. And this will actually change how we feel about the things that are being put upon us now. In fact, our family uh, has uh, contact with a, not physical contact, but through word of somebody who has returned from overseas who has contracted the virus and they are very unwell. And it's changed how we feel about what the government is trying to do for us here in Australia. When I heard this expression, storm, I thought of Jesus asleep in the boat. And uh, the disciples are worried, afraid, and they wake him up. And he simply stands up and says, be still. You know, it's a time for us to pray that... Uh, the things that our government are doing here, and when I say government, it's all sides, they're working so hard that the things that they're doing will actually bring a stop to this virus and that uh, the curve will be bent. But we pray because we know God is in control. But particularly I'd encourage you to pray that in this time when we have so much information that where we can be overwhelmed by it, that we each know we belong. We belong somewhere, that we're a part of a family, that we are, as we've talked a lot over recent weeks, home. And so we would pray that you would be connected to someone uh, who's part of uh, what we call CCW at home. And this is one of the other stories I want to share with you. Um, Danny and I, over the last week or so, have been connecting with the old life groups that existed and what we've been tremendously encouraged by is the new groups that have actually sprung up. We've got four new life groups that are actually happening within this family. People have taken the initiative of uh, drawing people, of clustering people uh, together 
and when I say cluster, they're working out ways to do this. And this is what's really encouraging us, is the way in which people are working out how to stay connected even though they can't physically meet. And we would really encourage you to make sure you're part of a group or start a group. Um, if you're interested, please speak to Danny or I or someone else who's actually already part of uh, what we're calling CCW Home or a life group. Um, the initiatives people have is amazing. The creativity that people have is amazing. Uh, whether they're setting up Zoom meetings or WhatsApp uh, groups or uh, all sorts of different things. And so there's no need for us to feel that we are on our own. Um, the other thing that is happening too is uh, people are feeling released not just to form groups amongst our own family, but also what does it mean to their neighbourhoods? And we heard this story this week of uh, someone within our family who has actually been around all their neighbours and checking to make sure all their neighbours are okay and working out ways in which their neighbours can be connected, everyone in their street. Um, so we would encourage you to look at how can you actually support your neighbours as well and look out for them? Another thing that we're doing here, and this is the final thing that I'll share with you today, is with King's Cafe, as you know, it's not operating. Uh, but what we're doing, uh, and it went out in e-news this week, is we're going to start up King's at Home. And this is, a, again, a great initiative. And it's really aligned with what other CAFs and that are doing within our communities. Uh, so if you want to uh, get... Uh, good price meals, uh, please consider uh, using King's Cafe, but particularly pray for those who have been connected to King's Cafe over recent times. The 2,000 odd people who are friends with it on Facebook, that this might be an opportunity for us to continue those relationships and encourage them and help people in this time of need. So that's all for me in terms of uh, some of the updates and we'll continue to give you updates on the family and, and the exciting things that are actually happening amongst us as God moves in our hearts, as he lifts us into new areas of being devoted to him, to giving to others and feeling uh, released as well. Um, what we would really ask you to do now is, uh, as a group, for those of you who are watching this, to uh, prepare for communion. Um, this is something that we want you to do uh, at home. Um, it will feel a bit strange for you probably, but we would really encourage you to continue to have this practice with one another. And to, while you're doing that, I'm just going to read out a passage from Hebrews just to help set uh, this tone and the spirit of this time that you will uh, share together as a family at home. Now may the God of peace who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus the great shepherd of the sheep and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood may he equip you with all you need for doing his will may he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to you all glory to him forever and ever amen I trust that you'll have a, a great and meaningful time together now in community. Thanks a lot.